All right, what's up, buddies? Um, finally, got a chance to install the 034 Turbo Muffler Delete, and that has now plumbed the boost hose to the previously unutilized hose where we were before capping it off to the Mark 8 PCV, well, I'm sorry, the, the 22 Tiguan PCV valve uh, hose. So normally, if you haven't been following along, pressure gets pumped from the turbo outlet right here through this hose, across an orifice inside, across the Venturi, which generates a vacuum on the PCV system itself, which maintains a vacuum on the crankcase under uh, more situations more consistently. Um, this video is about the testing results and uh, effects of utilizing it this way. In case you missed the original couple videos, the two that are worth watching, is the Mark 7 PCV analysis, how it works and why I adapted the Mark 8 valve. Um, and the other one is the using the Venturi to maintain crankcase vacuum. This is where I bench tested this valve to, or I'm sorry, where I bench tested the hose to quantify how much vacuum it could pull. Essentially, it can pull a ton of vacuum if you give it enough, sort, enough pressure. Um, so if you care about seeing the initial stuff that led up to this video, that's there. Um, I'll leave links to those both in the description. Alrighty, so before we get into the results of everything, we're going to go over the challenges during the install, utilizing it the way that I did. Um, for starters, this clamp right here is physically keyed into the hose. It has little tabs that actually bite into the hose, and it's not meant to spin in relation to the hose itself. This side, you can move however which way you want. The problem with that is that due to the turbo muffler delete, or I'm sorry, the, where the turbo, yeah, the turbo muffler delete, where the test ports come out, and using the 90 degree fitting, it ends up with this screw being right up against the uh, the 90 degree fitting. Um, clocking the fitting pretty much any other way ends up putting it at a putting the hose at a weird angle or too tight on the hose in my opinion. Um, realistically you could use a longer hose and clock the thing a little bit differently if you really wanted to but I was trying to make do with factory parts as much as possible. Um, here you can see the little tabs I'm talking about. If you pull them out carefully from the hose, they will leave little divots, but they're in the very, very end of the hose. Um, essentially, I removed this clamp and I flipped the whole thing upside down so that this is now on the bottom side facing the back side of the car. And you can see where I spread open those little tabs. I actually bent them outwards and I believe I actually bent them a little further upwards after this photo just to ensure that they would not dig into the rubber hose itself, especially since because these ends are now on the working side toward the middle of the hose, not on the very outside edge beyond the clamping area. Here's a little picture of from kind of like the view of the battery. If you have the battery out of there, this is how I snapped the photo. Um, you can see that there's no clamp right here. It's actually down on the bottom side at this point, um, facing upwards. Um, everything is very tight, and the way I had this clocked was specifically to avoid rubbing on the brake booster hose and every other thing that is down in this little area. And the other end of that hose runs right up here, and it runs pretty nicely. It fits pretty much like factory, and it goes up to the turbo muffler. I'm sorry, to the, uh, to the Venturi fitting on the uh, PCV hose, and it works great. All right, so right here I've overlaid two logs. The darker lines are from with the Venturi. This is, you know, what this video is about right here. My biggest concern comparing these darker lines to the lighter ones, which are from a third gear pull back in August, is wastegate duty cycle. My thought was that due to us essentially introducing a quote unquote boost leak, that wastegate duty cycle would take a hit. Realistically, it's imperceptibly changed. There's no difference, or if there is a difference, it's maybe a couple percent. Um, I saw a bigger improvement in wastegate duty cycle going from uh, stock downpipe to aftermarket downpipe, catted one. Um, so I have both of these logs are lined up on the boost onset where it's spooling right here. 
Um, to the left of the logs, you can see actually the one back in August with the simple retrofit done with the cap on that second hose um, actually started spooling sooner or you know the throttle plate opened sooner and spooling took longer because of that um, the so because the spool took a little bit longer honestly I don't think that the mark 8 PCV is improving spool there's no reason at all that that should be the case it's more so just due to variability in the ambient temperature and day air temp differences um, and you know just consistency from one pool to the next it's basically no perceptible change in spool time at least on the is20 um, and there is like i said there's zero real difference in the wastegate duty cycle and if you actually look at these the august um, you know simple retrofit is actually has a higher wastegate duty cycle again i believe that this is due to just variable errors and you know whatever but I was honestly expecting to see more like a 5 or 10% difference, and that is actually not a problem at all. All right, so what were the effects on the crankcase pressures? In a nutshell, using the Venturi allowed a more consistent vacuum during transition from off throttle to boost. Um, and I'm comparing that to the original, what I'm going to call the basic retrofit of the Mark 8 valve, or any of the standard Mark 7 PCV valves as delivered from the factory. It resulted in softer crankcase pressure transitions. There's nowhere near as much wild fluctuations in crankcase vacuum levels. There were little to no abrupt needle movements on the gauge if you watch the video at the end of this. Um, abrupt changes can promote moving oil around with the air. Um, and based on like all the way that stuff flows inside of the valves, I do believe that this is a potential cause or at least contributing factor to the Mark 7 PCVs as originally delivered ingesting oil so easily. And again, you can look at the videos referenced earlier um, if you want to get caught up on all of the theory in that. Um, the Mark 8 valve with the full retrofit the only remaining challenging time is longer low periods of low RPM, low throttle, near zero boost, and near zero manifold vacuum. That's because there's no vacuum via the cylinder head vacuum source. There's no vacuum being generated at the turbo inlet pipe because it's not flowing enough air yet. And there's also no boost going through the Venturi to generate vacuum. So while vacuum would be better on the crankcase, it's basically a pretty low stress situation and is still going to be much better than any of the original Mark 7 PCV valves and considerably better than every current PCV plate replacement option on the market, all of which put pressure on the crankcase at all times except at high RPM and, on, and or on boost on throttle. Um, Basically, you have to have a ton of air traveling through the turbo inlet pipe in order for uh, vacuum to be generated on the crankcase. So this pressure being put on the crankcase at all the other times that you're not wide open throttle will cause oil to slowly leak from everywhere on the engine. Cam cradle, front and rear main seals, oil cap, etc. These are all very common things. And I think that they're all issues that happen from the Mark 7 valve over a very long period of time or especially with defective ones, but it happens very quickly or can happen very quickly with any of the aftermarket PCV uh, plate replacements on the market. All right, so the biggest question of all is, is this quote unquote full market retrofit worth it or not? Meaning utilizing the Venturi. But the plus side of it is, you know, it can evacuate the crankcase pressure more efficiently under transitions. That's where all these valves struggle the most. Um, downside is increased cost. You know, you're adding another $120, $130 by the time you count the turbo muffler delete and the fittings required. If you already have the turbo muffler delete, it's probably worth experimenting with at least. Um, I am going to say still unknown tune issues on because I don't have a ton of time on my car like this. It's literally been one day. Um, I was mainly interested in getting the uh, crankcase pressure numbers, and I'm going to be further monitoring stuff like wastegate duty cycle, 
and fuel trims and everything else. Um, I also intend on tracking the car like this um, in a couple weeks at VIR. Um, basically, do this at your own risk. My personal opinion is if your car is not broke, don't try to fix it. Chances are you'll just increase chances of screwing something else up. Um, I personally think that the basic retrofit, utilizing you know the vacuum cap and removing that extra hose off of the TIG-1 PCV hose assembly and running it just like a regular Mark 7 valve otherwise will probably solve the issue for almost everybody on stock turbos at least with stock engines, uh, stock long blocks. Um, the biggest question mark is going to be big turbo cars, um, also stuff with built engines because of additional blow-by. Um, realistically, I need to get my pressure gauge on a big turbo car to see exactly what is going on. If it's got a ton of pressure being generated on transitions, in which case I do think that a full retrofit would be a good idea, or if um, if it's just happening under wide open throttle, then it may or may not be able to keep up. Um, I am aware of at least a couple people who have Mark 8 PCVs done with the basic retrofit on a big turbo car, but they don't have any significant amount of time on it other than a little bit of driving around on the street, but so far so good. So for a really quick recap on the Mark 8 versus Mark 7 PCV valves, this will cover both the basic and the full retrofits, benefits of either one of them. Basically, the Mark 8 valve gives you more flow capacity inside of the air oil separator portion of the valve. There's a larger outlet and a revised bypass valve. There's also additional steps internally to discourage oil inside of the valve from being sucked into the intake valves via the blue path as was referred to in the original Mark 7 PCV analysis video that will be linked in just a moment. Also, there are revised pressure or vacuum differentials um, in the blue path vacuum source as it relates to the turbo inlet pipe vacuum sources. Um, by changing up the relationship of those two, you can potentially discourage oil from being sucked into the intake valves on throttle lift to some degree. That's my personal theory. Um, it's explained in that prior video. And lastly, this actually applies to both the Mark 7 and the Mark 8 OEM PCV valves. They maintain a vacuum at idle and low load or low airflow situations, unlike every aftermarket PCV plate replacements, which actually put pressure on the crankcase at idle because they all block off the blue path vacuum source. There is an upcoming PCV plate from uh, Radium Engineering, and based off of what I can see from their diagram, it looks like theirs will still maintain some kind of vacuum at idle. So I am very curious to see how that thing performs once it does come out. But as of right now, I have not seen or heard of anything working out there right now. And to my knowledge, every other aftermarket plate replacement puts pressure on the crankcase, which causes oil leaks and other issues over time. Thin. If you would like to follow more of this kind of information, please check out www.datadrivenmqb.com. Follow Data Driven MQB on Facebook. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to Data Driven MQB on YouTube as well. It would be greatly appreciated. Um, I do have some plans in the future to do a little bit more testing. I want to find a big turbo car locally. Um, I also will be sending off my crankcase pressure cap adapter to a friend in Florida to be testing on his big turbo built engine Mark 7 GTI. So hopefully within the next month or two, we'll have some more solid facts on how this stuff works. In the meantime, uh, go ahead and let me know in the, in the comments or at data driven MQB on Facebook, how, um, if you're if you've done anything with these valves, you know how it's working out for you. Would love to hear. Um, unfortunately, you know I've got one car and one setup, and I can't test it all. So anything that others can do to help, I will gladly compile that information if you can get it to me. Um, if you happen to be in the Hampton Roads area and 
your car might fit the description of something that I need to take a look at for data purposes, please reach out and let me know.